all of those beautiful shots that you saw are silhouettes. It's almost impossible to get through a movie or show without seeing one. Having the silhouette shot in your arsenal can be extremely helpful for future projects. Today, after a brief and interesting history lesson of the silhouette, we'll break down a couple of shots from films and then get to a setup of our own. It's impossible to trace down the origin of the very first silhouette portrait, so let's begin with the history of the name. We first need to travel back to the 18th century. There was a man named Etienne de Silhouette. He was hired by France as the Controller General of Finances to hopefully fix the crisis of the suffering French society during the Seven Years' War. In this position, which Silhouette only stayed in for less than a year, he made considerable budget cuts in hopes to save France from its doom. Because of his actions, the saying a la Silhouette began to stick for things known as cheap. At this same time, an inexpensive art form grew in popularity. Artists would use scissors to cut around black paper and create a shadow profile of a subject. Painting was expensive, and this cheaper form of art led to the attachment of Etienne de Silhouette's name. The name stuck. Behold the silhouette. Throughout the rest of time, up until today, the silhouette has evolved to show its presence in many new art forms. Paper cuts, shadow theater, photography, and in the movies. As you saw in the intro, there are countless films that have used silhouettes to create beautiful shots. Let's check out a few silhouette examples. First up, the film Arrival, DP'd by Bradford Young. I've always loved this lake house scene. There are two keys that I personally think make or break a silhouette shot, exposure and composition. Without properly exposing an image for a silhouette, there would be no silhouette at all. In order to have the subject in the frame as a shadow, you need to expose for the bright part of the scene. Take a look at the exposure of this shot when I use false color. The sky is exposed around 60 IRE and the subject is exposed between 0 and 10 IRE. The sky is properly exposed, not blown out. The subject is exposed as the shadows of the scene. If we transition back to the original shot, you can see how this works. I couldn't find any behind the scenes of this shot, but if I had to guess, there was negative fill used in the room in order to stop the daylight from bouncing off the walls and filling in the subject. I could be completely wrong, but if you ever run into this issue, you could use some negative fill. We'll touch more on this later. Now for composition. What makes this shot so appealing are the leading lines to the subject on the roof, the vertical lines on the door frame and windows, and the symmetrical framing of the subject. For the next shot, let's check out this blue hour scene from Sicario, DP'd by Roger Deakins. Same rules apply for exposure. Here's what the false color looks like. The shot is exposed to the sky around 35 IRE and the subject's at zero. This is definitely a darker scene, but still, the subject has to be the shadow of the scene. For composition, what sticks out to me here is the balance. The subjects are perfectly placed to create a compelling image as they move in the scene. It's one thing to break down shots and learn what you can from them, but if you truly want to understand how things work, you have to put it into practice. An easy location to shoot a silhouette is in front of a window. I found a window to shoot in and decided to off-center the window. Once the composition is locked down, it's time to focus on exposure. To bring down the highlights of a shot, there are a few different settings that you can change. Shutter, aperture, and ISO. For this shot, I want to shoot in 24 frames per second, so I can't change that. And I want natural motion, so I'll stick to 180 degree shutter. Because I want a certain depth of field, I need to leave the aperture at 2.1. Now for ISO, changing it from 400 to 100 will only bring down the image two stops. I change this only when I need to because I've found that my Pocket 6K Pro has a cleaner image if I keep it at the native ISO of 400. For anyone out there that doesn't have a 6K Pro, it'll be specific to your camera. So for this shot, we need ND. The 6K Pro has built-in ND filters. If your camera doesn't, you can pick up a variable ND like this one here. I'll use false color to expose for the sky. The subject is in the shadows of the image, but the light entering the room from the window is bouncing off the walls and filling in the subject. To fix this, like I mentioned with Bradford Young's shot, I'll bring in negative fill. I have a floppy and some black muslin. This will do the trick. Take a look at the side-by-side -side false color of the no negative fill shot and the negative fill shot. Here's the final shot.
These videos have been so much fun to put together. I hope that every time you stop by, you're learning something new. Thank you for watching the video. Until next time, see you friends.